I'm Chucky. And I'm your friend to the end. I hate kids. Where are we going? Home. Where's home? I have no idea. Heidi fucking ho. Uh, uh. Hello, everyone. It is Alex Vincent. And Christina Lees. Welcome to the show, guys. Uh, this is on YouTube. It's going to be on Spotify, Apple Music, wherever I guess people get their podcasts, Apple Podcasts. I'm figuring all that out this weekend. But um, there will be extended versions of this on our Patreons. Also, you get early access. Uh, we'll put a little splash of our Patreons right on the bottom. See? Right there. I'm thinking ahead. <laughs> yes. So how are you doing? I am well. I am well. Uh, I'm excited to have one episode get out there. It seems like it's been um, in the birth canal for a really long time. It really has been, it's yeah. Been to be born. It has been. But uh, yeah, we got a great interview for you guys in this episode. We decided to, basically how this show is going to work is... We're going to get together and just talk. We have plenty to talk about, about our experience with Chucky, with the, the TV series, the films, going all the way back to 88 for me, 80, or 87, 89. Uh, but also just the experience of being in Toronto and filming season one. I really, the reason why we're doing this is because we were such huge fans of the show ourselves. I think, we both think that Don just did an absolute brilliant job. Everybody did. Um, and everybody worked so hard on it. And uh, we are as eager for season two as all of you are, I promise you. Right. And so the, the format we finally uh, decided upon was just going to be a little intro to, uh, uh, you know, chat between Alex and myself before every interview. Then there'll be an interview and a little tiny wrap up at the end. And that's episode one, part one. Episode one, part two is the following week. And it will be the two of us watching episode one and commenting on it in real time. And doing yep. a breakdown of the whole episode. So episode one is a two-part, all of them will be two-parters. And they'll yep. roll out, uh, you know, interview every other week, breakdown of an episode every other week. And I think we'll do maybe like a little like fan episode too. I know a lot of you guys have a lot to say. Uh, we've been putting out requests for questions for our guests. We already uh, have a couple interviews under our belt, so to speak. And we have several others coming, all of your favorites, most of your favorites. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll do this next year and pick up all the people we didn't didn't get this time. But plenty of people to talk to and plenty to talk to them about. Uh, so tell me, Alex, tell me about your experience of getting um, Child's Play 1, the first Child's Play. So I was auditioning in New York City. I started when I was like five years old. I did some print work. I did a few commercials. And I did, uh, I was on As the World Turns for a little while, like two weeks. And, and then I booked Chucky, I, Child's Play 1. I had a couple auditions in New York City. Then I had a call back against a couple other uh, actors, the child actors that were left in the running for the character. They flew us out to LA. I auditioned in a room filled with the producers. I imagine David Kirshner was there. I imagine Laura Moskowitz was there, um, the casting directors. And my mother was in the room with me, which even at five years old, six years old, that really didn't happen. Like they, maybe now in 2022 it does, but in 1987, your mother would be in the waiting room, they sign you in, and then you just kind of go in and do your audition. But this time she was in the room and we were doing the scene where I say Aunt Maggie was a real bitch and got what she deserved. And uh, I didn't want to curse in front of my mom. I didn't want to swear in front of her. So when we got to that, part I froze up and said I don't remember the lines and they said okay we'll start again 
And then we got to that part and I froze again and I got up and I ran out and I locked myself in the bathroom. And uh, my mother came in and asked me what was wrong. And I said, I don't want to say that word in front of you. So she went back and told them no, he knows all the lines. And I did. My memory was like really great back then, better than now. But I had convinced them that I forgot the lines. And I think that helped because I was a good enough actor to fool them. But also, I think the innocence of me fit the innocence of Andy that they were looking for. Um, so, I, so I think that that, you know, probably helped sell it. And I was awfully cute. I mean, let's be honest. I was a really cute kid. So that helped. It's funny that that's your story because my story with Kyle is similar, but it's the yin to that yang, you know, you, uh, yeah. you know, you weren't getting it and then you did something sort of cute that was character driven. What is unintentionally character driven, you know? Um, so I went in and I read uh, on the universal law, which is always really intimidating, but fun. And uh, I didn't get it. And I guess nobody got it. So they went back and they were revisiting the girls that were the sort of near misses. And in the interim, I had gotten a couple jobs. I'd booked an episode of 21 Jump Street and I booked an episode of Baywatch. And I was doing a play downtown where I met Jennifer Tilly, which is a story we can get into later. But um, I had I was had an early call on the day they wanted to bring me back on the Baywatch set. So they had to come in earlier. And it was at nine because I probably had like a you know 10 or 1030 set call. So I went in there with more attitude and more confidence than I'd had the first time. Because I had work, I was getting work and I really, I was like, yeah, okay, let's get the show on the road. I got somewhere to go, people to see and things to do. And that added extra that added attitude, um, I think is what got me the job the second time around. So it's sort of funny that unintentional behavior got us the jobs. I want to interject the story that I touched upon it, uh, the Jennifer Tilly thing, that I was doing a play downtown in 1989 and, um, and it was a big theater, with a big the LA theater center. There's like four theaters in the, under the same roof. And I was doing a play called The Geography of Luck. And she was doing a play, I don't even remember what it was called, but her character was in lingerie the whole time and we shared a dressing room. So I had to look at Jennifer, gorgeous, you know, 20 something Jennifer Tilly in her underwear and, and a bustier seven shows a week. And she looked, and the, I mean, she looked ridiculous in the best possible, yeah. sense, the sexiest sure. thing you've ever seen in your life. And uh, so when her show ended, I stole the bustier from her costume box, um, thinking that, that if I just wear the bustier she had worn, that I may, may like be able to steal some of the, her sex appeal, which of course failed miserably. I didn't have the rack to fill, <laughs> to fill it. And uh, <laughs> it just sat in a drawer until it turned to powder and I threw it away. But uh, I wish I really- Sadly, I wish I yeah. Sadly, there was no eBay back then because, geez. I don't know that I would have. That would have been sort of, I know. But totally this, invasive, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, so that was my Jennifer Tilly story. So I knew Jennifer before either one of us had gotten a Chucky. Yeah, she's thought, been in your house. She was in your house long before she was Tiffany. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Jason Priestley and I had a, she did come to, we, had, we share a friend in common too. So she's been, yeah, to my house. Yeah. I mean, like 25, 30 years ago in my house. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, and you, you know Meg, you know Meg too, right? Didn't you know yeah, Meg? Meg the body snatchers with Meg. Yeah, yeah, that's right. For those of you who don't know, I assume most of you do, but um, I, Christine and Alex are closer than Kyle and Andy probably ever were. I mean, we're very, very close, and we have been for a long, long time. Um, so that's why I, I love doing this with you, and and I knew that I would, and I knew that uh, we we were a good choice of people to do it because. We, we know we have the memories from the very beginning of all of this. We had the experience of all this new stuff this year. And uh, we're the OGs, so to speak, right? That's what we've you're, been late. You're the Uber OG. I'm the Uber OG. I am. I am. I was actually, I was the only person on set of the Chucky TV series that was there since the first film. Yeah. I was on set since the first film. That, that could change as time goes on. Good. Uh, Don's got all kinds of big plans for this show. So we never know who's going to show up. There's a lot of characters to recycle, you know, to cycle through. So True. Yeah. as I've been telling people, you know, everybody says like, oh, I want this person in it. I want this person in it. It also takes a desire from them to be in it. You know, it's, it's not just like we want it. So it's going to happen. You know, right. it's, they have to want it also. They have to want to do it. Like right. they have, they have negotiation. They have a deal. They have to work out. They have, there's so many layers to it there's other things as well though like i think people forget that i know this from the bh center 210 reboot in 19 in 2019 
that everyone was mad that we weren't 25. Like, I don't want to see a bunch of 50 year olds and rah, 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 old fucking people. It's like, well, that's how old we are. Like, what do you want? I wish I was 25 too. Yeah. Right? So people forget that it's been 32, 33 years that Karen and the, the cop, he's not a cop anymore. You know, he's like yeah. 75 years old. And so, and so is she. Really retired. They're like, um, they're just not the characters they were in 1988. They're not the people. So they're going to bring a very different, um, their, their story has to match the age that they are, you know, for those particular, that's, a, that, that's the two big ones that everybody wants is your mom yeah. and the cop. Um, and again, they, the two of them, um, I don't know how much acting Catherine does these days. I don't think, I think she's sort of saying Catherine's that. retired. She considers herself retired. She made a video saying she's retired. Yeah. Um, now, does that mean that it's impossible for, for Karen's comeback? No, I guess not. But uh, that's the last I heard. She, she's retired. You well, know? you're retired from, from acting too, technically. You were her last That's very year. true. It brings people, it brings people yeah. out of retirement. Um, yeah. So... I've I've been I was watching my uh, from Don Mancini I I've had for thirty plus years now some behind the scenes footage of Child's Play two on my Patreon I'm going to be put it, releasing that never before seen stuff but one thing that I want to say about it is and I've said this to you a bunch but every take that you're in when they say cut you start cracking up. Like I, I, it was the absurdity, I guess, of working with this doll. It was how much fun you were having on that set. Um, and, you know, we talk about it all the time about how like Don was there on set filming things all the time. John had just John Lafia had just such a laid back kind of friendly demeanor. And it was in the Universal Studios back lot. Like, I mean, we were so thrilled to make that film. And I know you, yeah. you know, I was I was. Uh, seven turning eight or something like that and you were 24 playing 17 but uh you you obviously and so did i have so much fun making that film yes there was a there was a john don mancini was 26 like he's a baby it was a yeah. really young crew too and because you were there and you're a baby and i looked like a baby everyone treated me like i was a kid when i even though i was 24 i looked young so it's a, it changes the energy on the set everyone's got sort of better behavior going on I, not that they're bad but like with the kids around you got to really keep it together and um I laugh because like, you know, you give chase, you're shaking this doll, like pretending it's attacking you, but you're doing all the physicality of it, you know? Um, and it's silly. It's embarrassing. I mean, I've done things where I have to be in an audition, even where you have to be like, oh, don't hit me. Like no one's hitting you. You have to pantomime being, and when it's over, I'm like, and scene, or I'll crack up in the audition, which they, doesn't really work. They don't like it. They think you're mocking. <laughs> they don't like that so much. the material, but what are you going to do? You feel like an asshole. Yeah. You feel like an asshole. Well, I think that that uh, for I, you know, being first of all, Child's Play one when we made it, it was we made the outside scenes, we shot the outside scenes in Chicago, where it was freezing cold, um, like the coldest winter ever at the time, and, uh, and we shot all the indoor stuff in L.A. in Studio City or something like that. I think. Uh, no, what what scenes? All the indoor scenes of Child's Play one, of oh. the first. Child's Play one, I don't know. I think it was, where's the MGM lot? Culver City, does that sound right? Or is that? No, uh, Culver City is right. That's where it that's is. What it was. Yeah. yeah. Um, but Child's Play 2 was all on the back lot of Universal Studios. This incredible, historic, amazing, you know, I mean. And Universal's exciting because that's where all the, the classic monsters were born. That's where Dracula and Frankenstein and Bride of Frankenstein and the Wolfman and the mummy, they're all born from Universal. So to have to be doing a horror movie in the in the most iconic horror location on Earth. Yeah. Really fucking cool. And it's probably very cool for Don, too, because I know he loves Jaws so much. And Jaws was such a big thing there, too. So I was I was this is 1989. I was a massive Back to the Future fan. And uh, Don took me out in his blue Alfa Romeo to see Back to the Future 2. And they were filming Back to the Future 3 at the time. Like they, they made them both almost overlapping or one right into the next. Um, and the whole Back to the Future set is all there in the back lot. A and the part three stuff was there at the time. I don't think they held on to that, but they still had all, they still have a bunch of it there. But I was such a big Marty McFly fan and just a Michael J. Fox fan. I love Teen Wolf too. And 
also, not Teen Wolf 2. I love Teen Wolf also. Uh, 2 I didn't like as much. But anyway, um, I got to walk through that whole Back to the Future set at eight years old. I sat in the actual DeLorean and I had lunch with Michael J. Fox in his trailer and got to ask him questions about the first two films. It was the first real thrilling meeting a hero moment of my life. Um, And I remember it to this day. I remember the things I asked him. I remember what his trailer looked like. I remember remember all of it. Um, But anyways, we have plenty of things to talk about over these next uh, several episodes of this show. Um, one of the things we're really excited to bring you guys besides our breakdowns, and, and we really have been putting a lot of thought into them about choices Don made about homages to different uh, other, first of all, other Chucky films, but other films in general. Um, it's just so loaded with Easter eggs. And when we get a chance to actually get Don on the show, um, we're definitely going to talk to him about all of that. But our first interview for this Chucky Talks podcast is with number one and number two of the TV series on the call sheet. And, you know, the two of the biggest characters in the show, certainly two of your favorites. And I'm talking, of course, about Bjorgvin and Zachary Arthur. Jevin. Devin, yeah, Jevin. Devin and Jake, a.k.a. Jevin. Like Andy and Kyle is a.k.a. Candy, which I think, I think Don came up with that. But um, Jevin, yeah, Jake, Jake and Devin, Zach and Bjorgvin. Um, I think they were so excellent in the show. Their chemistry, obviously, everybody really connected with. And their chemistry in life, they obviously are very fond of each other. Um, They enjoy each other's company. They have a lot of inside jokes. I mean, look, six months on a big TV show, especially at that age, has got to be very bonding, you know? And especially in a... During COVID, during COVID, so there's nowhere to go. And it was very bond-inducing environment. Yeah, and they're characters with the romantic interest in each other to the characters, not the actors. But um, so, yeah, of course, they, they bonded a lot in this process. Um, meeting both of them was very exciting. Zach especially was excited to meet us. Uh, and Bjorken was a little anxious because it was a busy day. But um, but they're both just just super, super cool and chill and intelligent. And um, we're thrilled to to have a. Uh, Actors that understand how uh, important this franchise is to people and, and how impactful it's been for longer than their lives, yeah. you know, double their lives, if not longer. Yeah. So should we go right and let them do it? Let them get the time? Yeah. So here's our interview with Devin Evans. One word, Devin Evans. And Zach Arthur, who plays Jake Wheeler. And this is our interview with them. Hope you enjoy it. Let's see if we got him. Here's Zach. Hello. Hey, there he Hello. is. How are you? You're here. You oh. made it. Yes, I did make and... it. And you're open. Hey, hey. hey. Welcome, guys. Welcome to the first episode, first interview. There you go. Of Chucky Talks. Thank you guys for joining us. You guys are. You know, you're the stars of the show. You're number one and number two. So we had to start with number one and number two. Makes sense. Well, thank you. Thank you for being with us tonight. We have a bunch of questions. Fans had a bunch of questions that I went through and picked our favorite. But uh, yeah, I just start from the very beginning here. Uh, Zach, you, you know, you've been acting for a while. I mean, you started young. You started about the same age as I did. Um, I'm curious. What uh, got you excited about acting? Was this something your, your parents were interested in? Was it something you came up with the, the idea yourself? How did this idea get in your head? Well, um, so it wasn't entirely my idea in the beginning, but um, so basically my mom, she was in uh, theater and stuff like that. And um, I would, I remember I used to memorize her songs and help her memorize them and sing them with her. And I think it ended up being her um, her voice teacher that actually said, hey, you need to get this kid acting. And so I was kind of thrown into it. I mean, I'm very grateful that I'm here now, but I was kind of like 
thrown into it, but I, I've always loved it and I can't see myself doing anything else. Well, that's cool. I, th I think about back to, you know, when I was six years old, I don't even remember the conscious decision I made. It was something I wanted to do, but I, you know, I was so young and now I'm not so young and I can't even remember that. What about you, Bjorkman? How did that uh, start for you? I mean, I guess I'm considered young and I don't even remember uh, <laughs> I, when, when I like why I did it. I, I'm not doing as, lo um, as long as you or Zach, but I'm pretty sure it was like so back in the day, I think we were in North Carolina. I was like 10 or maybe nine. And uh, me and my brother really wanted to get a PS3. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then we were like, mom, please, mom, please. And then mom was like, we can make the money yourself. And then, you know, oh. my mom is, my, my mom is smart, you know, and like, you know, we were making little films and stuff around the house and like that. So then she just kind of like started self-submitting us for stuff, you know, doing auditions, getting used to it. And then, you know, later down the line, we like actually got more into it, you know, started getting an agent, you know, actually getting some roles. And, you know, I think I kind of like it. I like it. It's fun. It's cool being like, you know, there, you know, cause I want to be a filmmaker. So it's kind of like a good, like place to be like right in front of the camera. You can see all the stuff happening and kind of be in it too. It's pretty, it's amazing. Absolutely. Did you guys do drama in school? Did you do any of plays in school? I did. I think I did theater for like a little tiny bit, but not a lot. All the plays I did, I wrote <laughs> and then I That's... did. Yeah. Cause like we did a little class. We basically made our own plays and then I basically made all the plays cause no one else was creative enough. Awesome. Awesome. I got into it the same way you did. I got into it much later, but I wanted to be a filmmaker and film school wasn't really a possibility. So I thought, what's what better film school than being on a set? Uh, and so I became an actor as a backdoor way to be a filmmaker too. So now when you got the call for this audition to begin with, what was your awareness of Chucky? I mean, obviously he's a, he's a cultural um icon so to speak a character everybody knows but how, how aware were you had you seen the films before uh, i haven't seen any of the films but obviously i mean i know what chucky is so when i heard about it i was like oh they're doing a show of it interesting and then you know i just did the audition you know it was fun i did the callback with don talked to him for like 45 minutes about movies we got nothing done that was awesome <laughs> and then i think and then uh, when i booked it uh, i decided to watch all the movies and, you know, they're all really good. I think my favorite is Child's Play 2, I think. And, yeah. We, we sure appreciate that. Who set you up to give you that answer? Mm -hmm. that Me? Uh, my own knowledge? Uh, no, he did, some, he did some research before. He right, answer, right answer to say <laughs> yes. And, and, yeah, you seem to know the right thing to do because if you want to uh, impress Don talking to him about movies, that's an encyclopedia of movies so you you yeah. picked a good in to relate to him uh what about you zach um well i mean i probably said this in like like interviews in the past but i didn't i, I never really i i knew about chucky i knew about like oh it's this a scary doll but i was never allowed to watch it which i guess <laughs> is a good thing i mean people i guess younger than our age probably shouldn't be watching you know <laughs> those types of movies but probably not um probably not. but they I mean, you can I mean, we're not stopping you from watching our show but um <laughs> of course watch it of course okay. of course watch it they're but, going to anyway you know that they're gonna find a yeah. way when i when i was a kid it was it seemed more difficult you had to hide on the stairs and like creep behind the couch and watch what your parents were watching nowadays um, you guys you guys grew up with access to everything so yeah i guess it's a little easier yeah. And I don't, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, I guess it depends how you look at it. Yeah. You know, uh, I think I think you guys are growing up a little faster than we were um, with more exposure to stuff. But what was the audition process like for you, Zach? Was this just one uh, one audition of the many that you get? Um, well, I mean, I guess um, usually my mom is the one who goes through and accepts or declines, you know, yeah. roles. But um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's really it. It was, it was just like really any other audition. Um, but um, when I read it and I realized it was Chucky, I was like, oh man, I, I better get this. I better, I better work hard and I better get this. So yeah. Well, you did. When, for sure. <laughs> yeah. When you guys, when you guys both read the, the pilot, um, did you find yourselves identifying most with the characters that you were cast to play ultimately? Or did you read the script and see yourself as a different character? 
you know, it was weird because, um, I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter, like, in the grand scheme of things, because, I mean, you're playing a role, but um, I did, okay, I'm not saying I'm, like, some bully, or, <laughs> but I, I think I, I did actually more relate to junior in that sense. Yeah, but, in the beginning. Um, yeah, in the beginning, but um, I ended up um, playing Jake, and I'm very happy with that. Yeah, I mean, I think once you get into the the character, you you, you find ways that you relate to them, um, one way yeah. or another. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, like, all the characters are very relatable, and yeah. so I mean, I guess it could go either way. It's it's funny because uh, I thought I was pretty much kind of like similar to my character. I was, we had some parallels and stuff, but. Don once said to me that like you're probably like the most opposite from your character for the whole cast and I was like huh and I thought hmm. about it I was like you know what I think so <laughs> why I don't see that at all uh, no because I think you know Devin he's like you know he's charismatic he he you know he's popular but I think it's like how he does it you know he's like a nice guy he's he's you know like I I, I think he cares what people kind of talk about him sometimes I don't I just kind of say stuff <laughs> Yeah. you know i mean i think we're similar but also like very different so it was kind of fun being able to do something like new you know something like you know i haven't like done that before you know kind of been been nice before you know i'm a really you know i'm a big meanie so <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Sure. i can vouch for that that's the, I really the impression you give to people let me tell you <laughs> now i i think about that when i first met you guys on set um and you know i I was thrilled, obviously, to be back on a Chucky set and seeing the uh, excitement from you guys entering this. You know, this has been in my life 34 years, uh, Christine almost as long. Uh, but seeing your excitement come in, and I remember, uh, Zach, when we met, you were really sweet to uh, Christine and I. And he said, is this really happening? Is this real? No, nah, it was not. It was, I was I starstruck when I met everybody. And yeah, I don't know, it's crazy. And then he said, I'm the new you. Yeah, I, but I didn't mean it that way, but I didn't, I didn't mean it like I was gonna replace you. I'm I, taking your place. No, 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 no. Security, no, no. somebody call security and get this Andy guy out of here. It was, yeah. very, it was very sweet. And bo both your parents were, were very, very sweet and kind to us. And we were just so excited to have you there. And, and uh, Bjorgen, the day I met you actually was probably, one of your more difficult days on set. I think that the first time we met was the day that you were shooting the reveal that your mother had died. Oh, oh, I think so. Yeah. Cause I, I think I, I met you once. Yeah. Way. Cause I think I met you once before, but like, like a brief, like hello, but I think, yeah, I did yeah. meet you. Yeah. That day. And I was kind of like, I was like, Hey, what's up? But I was trying to focus on like, I could tell else. you were a little in your head that day, <laughs> which is great. You know, it's great that you were thinking about it so much. And oh. I remember Bjorn, he was so nervous for like the whole shoot. He was dreading that one scene for yeah, the whole no, time. We were I was, Canada. you know, like any other scene, like, you know, the scenes with me and Jake, you know, all the any other scene, I was like fine with those. I was so stressed out about being like sad because I've never like done that before. It was a yeah. new emotion I've done. So I had to like really get in the zone and like kind of practice. I, I, I relate to that completely. I remember I was when I did ER for a year and I did, there was one. One scene I had to do the big crying scene and I dreaded it for 10 days until like, I, was, like, I lived and died in, that, in my head about that scene until it happened. I completely so, relate to that. I did the same here. thing. Yeah, yeah, same here for me too. I, uh, I remember in Child's Play 1 where Andy breaks down crying, but Chucky is here and he's going to kill me. I remember that was on page 43. I was worried about it with my acting oh, coach. You remember the page number? Yeah, people always oh, people say like, how did you start crying? A big part of it was I was just so anxious for so long about yeah. doing that scene you know so, i mean that's one way to do it you know yeah but Zach, you said you had a lot of heavy lifting you had a lot of emotional stuff to do um yeah how, how did you handle that i did it yeah <laughs> um i mean i i mean I, you're not really there's no way to really handle that i mean you just gotta do it i think i had one day where i had to do an intense crying scene for six hours, six, six or seven hours, I was <laughs> constantly yeah. crying. And man, it doesn't get any easier. I've done a lot of um, more darker, deeper roles where I've had to be, you know, this emotional, but 
it does not get easier. It's so tiring. Like you get home and you flop on your bed and you instantly go to sleep. And I'm not that way. I'm like nocturnal or something. Like I can't go to sleep. But yeah. for that show, man, those days knocked me out. Like, Was there a day on set for, for you, Zach? in this character, Jake, that was most difficult to you, the most challenging? I don't know. I, I, it's kind of hard because, I mean, I'm used to it at this point, yeah. but um, I think I, I, this, is, this is both for me and Bjorvin, um, the scene where it was the kiss scene, oh. <laughs> episode five, that was, that was very nerve. That was very nerve wracking. No, that was nerve wracking for you. Okay. <laughs> no, it was for I, you too. No, no, no. It, no, okay, it was I, more for me, but le- you were nervous. I was. Oh, of course, I was nervous. I mean, I'm I'm nervous for every scene. Okay, I'm not trying to mess it up. <laughs> but you know, I you know, I already like from the very beginning, I already knew that like there was gonna be a scene. So I I was just ready, and then I was zen for like the whole shooting, and I was like, you no, know what? I'm dude, not no, even like. There's no about way it. you. We were both so nervous, bro. I've never done a kiss scene before, <laughs> so I didn't want to mess it up or make it look weird. Because like every time in any show I've seen, kiss scenes make me cringe. So I'm not, I'm not trying to cringe on my own kiss scene. <laughs> so yeah. I think I did a decent job. Oh, I think you guys did great. I don't think there was anything <laughs> cringy about it, honestly. I think it, it just felt incredibly natural. You know, my interpretation of that kiss, and I, and I could be wrong. I'm curious what your uh, thoughts about it were, but it felt to me that in those characters that this was very likely their first kiss with anybody, not just with each other, but I kind of got the impression that this was maybe their first kiss. I mean, I certainly remember mine. I think you guys all remember yours. Um, Did you feel that way? Did you feel like maybe, did did you bring that into the moment a little bit that it was maybe their first kiss? Aside from being just really nervous, (laughs) but... um... You know, I think not to make the excuse because, you know, I didn't lean in far enough. So, you know, Zach had to go in a lot. But, you know, I had to go so far, man. No, (laughs) so far. But not having an excuse. My excuse is that, you know, I was being the character. The character doesn't know how to do it. So, you know, that's why it was so far back. That's my, that's my, I was, I was nervous because the character was supposed to be nervous. Absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) Totally wasn't my fault. No. You know, I I tell you, like, I I get asked all the time how hard it is to work with Chucky. Is it difficult to work with a doll? Is it difficult to work with something that's not real? And my answer is always no. Love scenes are the hardest thing. Love scenes of any kind are the hardest thing always. Especially if you don't like the person, which will will happen to you before you're dead. You'll you'll have to do a love scene with somebody you don't like in real life, and it's really hard. Yeah, I bet. So, So now we spend all this time in Toronto. Uh, it's an incredible experience. We got to, you know, go out to dinner and have these great, you know, off-camera moments with these amazing people involved in this show. And I'm sure you cherish that as much as I do, uh, because that was great. But even all the work, all the hard work, especially you guys are on set almost every day. um, This all culminates in seeing the film, the show for the first time ever. Um, Zach, we had the unique opportunity to watch it with an audience of 3,000 people at New York City Comic Con. And that was my first time seeing the episode. Um, What about you? Was that also your first time seeing it? What? When we watched (laughs) it, I was, I I didn't know what was, wait, what? Oh, the show, the show. Yeah, the show. show. We're talking about Chucky here. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the first time I saw it all finished and polished, but we did see it one time at Allie's, like, yes. apartment thing. Yeah. You, you weren't there, Bjorgman. You weren't in New York, were you? I was not in New York, no. I wasn't either. What was your experience made... watching it for the first time? Where did you see the first episode uh, the first time? Like, when it aired? Uh, I guess I saw it, like, most of it, like, like not fully finished, but I saw it at, um, Ali's uh, apartment because um, Don came over and like kind of showed us some of the episodes that you know like the progress going through it I think it you know it was it's kind of cool being able to like you know see the camera like do some weird move from outside you're like what's that mean and then you see it and it makes a lot of sense when you see it you know on the screen it's like, oh it's supposed to do that because you know they go under something something like that you know and it was uh it was kind of cool being able to see both sides after the fact there's yeah. always such a big you know jump i mean you have your imagination when reading the script and that's always you know a a great intro to this story but then when you see it actually edited and you see don's vision and the editors and all the hard work they did you know really and jennifer and fiona and people that just come on to set and crush it every minute 
Well, that was yeah. really cool. We were at New York City Comic Con. We watched it with like 3,000 people. And uh, Jennifer and Don called us up on stage. Yeah, that was... <laughs> I was not expecting that to happen. <laughs> I know. I wasn't expecting that either. It was funny because Jen couldn't really see us at first. She was just shouting out like, you know, we had it obviously pre-planned that we were going to be the first people to ask a question, yeah. you know? It was and funny because we, we were in the front row and then she, she was like, where room. are you? Why are you like, we're right here. And you <laughs> stood up, row. I remember, and you asked the question, yeah. which I think was like, uh, uh, why is Jake Wheeler your favorite character? Oh, yeah. And oh, you yeah. asked the question and I, I, I sensed that the audience was just kind of like a little quiet and confused. So I, I gave you a little tug on your jacket and that made you turn around and face the audience. And then they realized who was asking the question. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. And, and broke into applause. It was very, very fun. That was, yeah, that was really cool. And then when the show aired at, at Tuesday night, 10 o'clock on October 12th, where were you guys for that? Jennifer Tilly screening. Jennifer Tilly at the Soho House. Yes. Yes. That, that was, was episode one. Yeah. Yeah. We went to the screening for that one. It was fun. It's cool. Yeah, I bet. But I really loved the week to week watching it with everybody. I mean, this is really the first, aside from like a week on As the World Turns when I was five, this is the first time I was ever on TV. Um, so watching it week to week was a thrill. And, and also, you know, seeing their edits was super cool, but also seeing, uh, those featurettes, those little featurettes that they made of us behind the scenes. Oh, yeah. Was, oh, yeah. That really the, the end of the episode. Really cool. Yeah. I, I think I like one that. of my favorite parts was when uh, Jennifer Tilly completely made Bjorkman uncomfortable with. <laughs> oh, <Okay. laughs> that was a great interview. I can't see some of the details, but something happened to make them, you know, they're a little intoxicated. Yeah. So that whole interview. <laughs> I, I just really want that whole interview uncut and just to watch, watch it by myself because that was a great, it was so funny. <laughs> hey, what's wrong? You, you were just sitting here the whole time. You were just, you were, you looked so like, <laughs> I was sitting, sitting there, there with there, your legs there, crossed. And, and, we're just talking. It was, it was there, great. You mentioned something about a body part or something and the, the editor zoomed right in on your awkward face. You like memed yourself with the face. I know, made. I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So now that it aired, um, obviously the reaction from the fans is huge. Um, and, and, you know, um, your Instagrams are blowing up much like all of ours are. And, and the attention from the fans is great. What about your um, friends, like your personal friends? How, did, how have you, what's their response been to this? And is it, has it been all you positive? Know, has it been a little mixed or, or <laughs> disappointing that they're not as excited as you are? I mean, I love my friends because they like, like, you know, they just don't care, which is great because I didn't want like yeah. to come back and everyone be like, oh my God, you're in Chucky. Oh my God. You know, I, I just wanted them to treat me as a normal person. And they did exactly that. They even like bullied me sometimes, you know, be like, oh, your character is some weird parts. So, you know, I like that, you know, yeah. I like coming back yeah. and getting like, you know, dogged on. So, um, you know, it was like the experience. Uh, one of my friends was, you know, I think probably like the most like fanny of it. And you know, he was like, he, he was like super excited about this and was, like, was talking to me all about stuff, you know, the background, how did they ever shoot, what cameras did they use? And like, I forgot half the stuff, but I told him all I can, you know, all I remember. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was kind of fun being able to see like, you know, my friend who like I know in person kind of excited about the show as well as me. Yeah. What about you, Zach? Um, well, in general, most of my friends were made on the show. <laughs> but <laughs> you know um i mean i don't know i fly solo mostly but um yeah no i guess it didn't really affect me um uh, i guess my friends because my friends aren't like you know the fan type yeah you know what i mean and you've known Allie for a very 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 long time oh yeah i've known her since i was like eight i worked on a show with her a long time ago transparent i didn't even know you were so, on that show yeah no i was i was there i was there the whole time You've done some cool work, man. I mean, you've worked with some of the, some greats already at your age. It's it's uh, remarkable. Um, it's just you know speaks speaks to your talent, which is awesome. Where do you guys live? Hold on, Bjorkman, you live in Texas. I do live in Texas. Where where? Texas. Okay. <laughs> are you, are you in Los Angeles, Zach? But somewhere in there. Yeah. I'm somewhere are you in, in Los Texas. Angeles, Zach? Yeah. Okay. All right. And so I, I know you both have uh, artistic sides outside of acting. I know, I know, Zach, you know, you, you like to sing and you certainly like to make beats and stuff, which is, uh, you know, something I, I do myself also. So 
I'm not much of a singer, but uh <laughs> but you like to sing. That's all that matters. Wait, who said that? Wait, where <laughs> you sang when you were a kid? I mean you got into Oh, when I was a kid. Oh, okay, yeah, God. I was like, hey, I know that no, video. Already, no, 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 I know that video. You need to chill out. Yeah, chill out oh boy um don't someone go. put it in the comment section no 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 we don't we don't need to do that we don't need to do, <laughs> do that no, no no we're past that we're past that i've already gotten enough it, too many people have seen that video that's all i gotta say um <laughs> i haven't i want you real soon probably thank you Bjorn, um, for that uh, one thank you a lot Bjorn. i really do thank you <laughs> you're welcome i appreciate you're welcome. everything about you you're welcome um yeah. but yeah i, I, I did but, sing for your beats, what do you use? Fruity Loops, right? Or uh, yeah, um, I FL, wouldn't call FL it FL Studio. Loops. FL Studio. Yeah, same thing. Give me those. Used to be called. Loops. Used to be called. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean it is, but it's the acronym. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, sure. Maybe no. Uh, yeah, I use some of that myself too. I want. I want to listen to some more of your, your music. Uh, are you going to? Are you using? Send to you. No, you I'm, a, I'm. I'm more of an artist. I just kind of draw little stuff. Yeah. yeah. I'm not trying to find either. something I drew here. You know, uh, he's not giving him stuff enough credit because I come to him all the time for like advice and like mixing and like sound choice. But like, he was with me when I made probably like the best beats I've ever done. True. And I was in the back there being like, like, do this. <laughs> yeah, do that. Do that. He's a conductor. Yes. I could, tell, I could tell there's some musical influence in you too, Bjork, but you certainly have some swag with your dance moves. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No yeah, I do. <laughs> So, so Chucky now season two is coming. Hopefully, we'll see how that goes. Obviously, we're no, we're all in the same holding pattern. So we'll just we'll see what happens there. But what else uh, do you have? You know, plans for the next couple months? You're like, what what else are you working on? What are you doing? Anything in particular, uh, Jorgen? I'm working on uh, opening up some like clothing stuff. I'm working on it. With me, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm dropping the, soon. I'm an official partner. Wow. Really? Unofficial, unofficial official yeah he yeah he's an unofficial official partner yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah i'm working yeah. on it it's um it's going pretty good i'm trying to figure i'm trying to figure how to like you know expand it make it more like you know higher quality so people can like have something that's you know last longer than like a iron-on transfer but yeah. uh yeah yeah that's cool. awesome that's great zach you have any other uh projects coming up that you're excited about or can talk about well music obviously sure. and as far as acting, um, right now I'm kind of slowing it down and taking a break for a bit, just because coming off of a show like that, where you're working for six months, yeah. I mean, I mean oh, it was yeah. a lot, and so I'm taking a break. But um, you know, well, I'm coming back soon, and yeah, you know, sure. going to start with up auditions and you know see where that goes. And um, obviously the business with Bjorkman with the shirts, the I'm unofficial official partner. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we do have, be on <laughs> we do have a fan question. Uh, I asked the fans to ask us questions, and we got a lot. Yeah, so sure. our fan question this week, we received a whole bunch of them, and thank you for sending them in. Uh, the winner this week, who I'll get to ask your question right now, of both of you, was Poisonberry on Instagram, Poison and they, they ask if you had to switch characters with someone, who would it be, and why? <laughs> this is kind of weird but i think maybe like junior because like that's like nothing i've ever done before i've never like you know and i kind of like how like in later i have to show you know he becomes evil i've always wanted to be a bad guy i love being i love being bad i don't know why it's kind of an exception for me and you know i think it'd be kind of cool to take like something in a totally new direction because i think you know Teo did a great job being like this you know kind of like not really necessarily a bully, more like a bully by proxy almost. And, you know, I mean, like, you can tell he's a nice guy, but he's also has some, has some problems. And I think he did a great job. And I don't think I can do as much of a good job, but I, I think it'd be really fun to do a character like that, more deep, methodical. Well, this was just season one. So who knows? Maybe, maybe uh, Devin Evans takes a turn to the dark side at some yeah. point. You, get that. Yeah, you got a dark arc next season, bro. <laughs> what about anyway, you, Zach? Um, I don't know. I don't know um it's hard for you to say you you are okay, you, you know are, you know you are the lead is? and the biggest character in the show yeah, you know you know, with anyone everybody you know wants to be um logan and um oh logan and lucas i feel logan and lucas and i'll tell you why because i think it's in episode six or seven there is kate there's a kiss between jennifer tilly 
Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> hey, no, no, we're we're in the going for the myself. Jennifer Tilly Listen, kiss. Yes. Who would not? Who would who not is right. Who, yeah, who who wouldn't? So anyway, that that's who I'd be. That's that's a and good that's, answer. That's a fair uh, answer. 100 percent answer. Yeah. Great answer. So all answer? right. I hey, got season two. Season the writers. Here, you I got know. the writers on my side. So you never know. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Well, what are you, 15? Let's wait till season six. Yeah. <laughs> hey, okay, okay. It could be a handhold. It could be a hug. <laughs> it could be something. Listen, it's anything. Anything. I'll tell you what I can get at this point. Choosers can't be beggars, man. <laughs> I mean, beggars can't be choosers. I did the wrong way. Anyway. It's kind of more, it's kind of a deeper question if you say it the other way. Oh, okay. yeah. All right. Yeah. So I got a couple either or questions for you just for fun. I'm going to rapid fire them at you. Jorgvin, you can answer him first, and then Zach. Uh, just a couple little silly, fun questions. Okay. Jorgvin, Jason or Freddy? Jason. Okay. Zach? Should I explain or no? Okay. No. 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 You can. Right. I will allow that for now. <laughs> Dang. Okay. Freddy. Freddy. Zach, what's your answer? I don't know. Freddy. He's yeah. going Freddy. I'm, I'm Freddy, too. All right. We're on that one. I am, too. But All right. I like Jason a lot too. All right, Bjorkman, uh, pizza or tacos? Tacos. I live in Texas, man. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Tacos. I'm half Mexican, so Going got, a, got a rep. Uh, yeah. Cats or dogs? Oh, ducks. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, I knew you were going to say that. wasn't that. part of the criteria. Uh, dogs. Dogs. I'm 50-50 on this one. All right. Wait, what? You can do that? Okay, then that do then. I... Okay. All right, Bjorg. <laughs> Xbox or PlayStation? PlayStation. Like I said, man, PS3. I have PS4 now, man. PlayStation all the way. Zach? Xbox. I'm mm, with you. Okay. I'm with you. All right. Uh, uh, Bjorg, Logan or Lucas? Uh. Wait. Lucas. Like which character? Do you... Lucas. Lucas. Wait, yeah. which one's the one that kisses the? <laughs> <laughs> Lucas. Yeah, we already knew your answer. Lucas. <laughs> Lucas. Lucas. All right, and then I got then I got two. Uh, I'm gonna put you on the spot with one. Doesn't um, Fiona a lot more kissing than Logan or Lucas? Fiona, I mean, Fiona got a lot of action. Okay, well maybe <laughs> I'm a little I, I'm a little young for that. Don't you think? Seeing, uh, <laughs> I don't know that kind of scene. A little kiss would have been fine. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, I'm gonna put you on the spot now, Zach. Oh. Nick Cage or Jim Carrey? No, 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 we're not. No, no. Okay, maybe. Okay, I don't think. No, it's not like Jim Carrey and you know Nicholas Cage are gonna be watching this. Um, <laughs> um, maybe just you answer know. honestly. I mean, you can't scare me like that. Um, where do you? No, I can't. Well, how am Wait, I supposed to Did you work with one of them? Yeah, I work with both of them. Yeah. With both of them? I oh, I didn't know that. So, yeah. um, I spent more time with Nicolas Cage. So you're going Nick Cage? Yes. All right, I got an equally, yeah. equally difficult question for you, Bjorkman. Ducks okay. or frogs? <sighs> <laughs> no. Nah, now you get where I am, bro. No, you can't can't do this to me. I love them Dude, both. What are, what are the ducks and frogs are watching this, bro? You can't do that. Ducks uh, and frogs have Instagram accounts these days, so they're gonna see it. I gonna see it, bro. <laughs> let's say, you know, just just for value of you know product, you know, you get eggs from ducks. You can get more out of them. Ducks. Okay. You get eggs from frogs. frogs. All the you frogs, eggs from frogs. All the frogs yeah. are weak. What are you talking about? Well, you don't eat them, but exactly, I know. But you can get okay, eggs and then eat them. All right, all right, all right. That was the last one. Thank you guys for that. Okay, I appreciate it. I, uh, you got it. You got it. I finished my little doo doo. Yeah. Oh shit! <laughs> that's awesome. You look kind of like a witch. Wow. I think I messed up with the hair, but <laughs> sorry. That's all right. That's awesome. That's <laughs> one thing I cannot do at all is draw. That's impressive, man. You could just sit there and do that. It is. I want to ask you one more question before we go, though. Yeah. I, I know you guys have done a lot of interviews and stuff since the show started, and um, and it's a one of two questions. You can answer the one that feels more organic for you to answer. It's either what do you what do you what do we not know about you that you wish we did know, or what is a question you wish people would have asked you during the whole uh, 
you know, all the interviews you've done, which is a question you wish somebody had asked. Oh my God. It's a, it's That's a, a hard one. <laughs> uh, I wish they would have, any questions about Jennifer Tilly? <laughs> wow. You got a big crush. <laughs> hey, we don't, we don't talk about it. We don't talk about it. We don't talk about it. Don't worry. I'll give them to more more than new interviews. <laughs> Zachary. About to work with Jennifer Tilly, specifically just Jennifer Tilly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, yes. I yes. think this is hard. Maybe like more questions about like, you know, like the things that kind of like, you know, like uh, more more behind the scenes stuff about on the show, I guess, like how things worked, like, you know, more like specifically because I'm I like looked at all that stuff, you know, there was a cool scene where like I think you hardly see it, but it was super cool setup. It was like the scene I think where Chucky's running at me in the hallway and he runs past. Like they put Chucky on like this little like car thing and it's like sticking out and he's just like standing in midair running and filling his arms. And it was kind of cool. He was just kind of like a little car that moved him out that way. And I was like, that was a cool setup to me. I don't know. I like all the nitty gritty stuff that yeah. goes into it. It's fun watching Chucky come to life. That's for sure. Can I ask in here? I remember I had a cool scene like that. There was, okay, so I was working on um, second unit, which is basically, if you don't know, um, I mean, you guys know what it means, but people watching. Sure. Um, <laughs> uh, basically, if um, there's extra scenes that need to be done and there's not enough time to get it done in the main unit, they put it the second unit and it's just like the same thing, but second second, it's a second little mini crew that gets extra yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, um, I was on second unit um, with the director, Jeff, who did the eighth episode. Um, but I did this scene where I was murdering. Um, like a life-size doll, like a life-size no, doll, statue kind of. I don't know. What do you call that? I guess a doll, right? Statue, I guess. Statue art thing. And I was, it was supposed to look exactly like Ali. And from the back, it looks exactly like Ali. And it's, it's, it honestly felt super weird to murder something like that. But anyway, the way that they set it up <laughs> is they had these like beads inside of it, like little red beads that if you stabbed into it, like they would fall out and they're like red beads to look like blood. Yeah. And so they put the camera under. And so as I like, ripped open like the stomach, like it's, it would be, it sounds so weird out of context. <laughs> We're talking about the show here. But um, <laughs> as I ripped open the stomach of the doll, not Allie in real life, the <laughs> like the red beads fell all into the camera and it, it like buried the view. It was oh, like a cool. That's, wow. That's cool. Yeah. It is cool. All right. Those were good answers. <laughs> well again guys you did such a fantastic job on the show and 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 for something that's been in our lives for so long i mean we are along with the fans so grateful that you put in so much effort and really took it as seriously as you could and uh respected the legacy of this character by giving your all to it uh by of this series and this franchise um means everything to us and clearly by the reaction you can tell it means everything to the fans um, I said to you, Zach, and I, I think I said the same to you, Bjork, then you guys will go on to do amazing things in your life, I have no doubt. But for the rest of your life, people will be talking to you about Chucky. Uh, well, I, I think, I'm fine with that. <laughs> yeah, well. It's a definite. I mean, yeah. I was- your to the end, that's for sure. That's what I was going to yeah. say. I was a little younger than you guys, but in 1987, he told me we'd be friends to the end. And clearly he was not kidding. Uh, yeah. <laughs> here we are you know but yeah guys thank you so much do you uh i know you're both on instagram do you have anything you want to plug your instagram or uh bjorgvin underscore rnars and also follow loser club underscore yes. apparel that's the at closing club, brand because i am in business with you i would also exactly. like to plug that yes at loser club streetwear and also for yeah. losers by losers loser club yes yeah okay <laughs> Um, <laughs> losers. Okay, you're fine. Uh, apparel. Apparel. All right. Loser club underscore apparel. Right. You got it. And wow. I would also like to plug my Instagram. <laughs> one Zachary Arthur, like like the number one, Zachary Arthur, with a K. People always misspell my name. Zach with a K. I'm guilty. I've I've written Zach. Zach I did. I um. Twenty times. I saw Close that on, on the Zoom thing. I'm. So, I didn't oh, do that on that though. Did I? <laughs> I, maybe I did. I'm so sorry, but no, that's all good. at least I say it Everybody right. Doesn't. At least I say yes. it. Right. Not yes, not Zach. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I haven't been calling you Zach. I'm at war I with did, every I single. I did call you Jake once or twice in New York, though. I didn't mean to, but 
I'm used to it. People call me Andy my whole life, so you'll get used to it too. Yeah. We'll be calling you Jake. So. Oh, how dare you? How dare you call me Jake? <laughs> anyway. I just well, answered it. I just I answered like 10 different names. <laughs> yeah. He's in my career all three in particular, but yeah, if I hear it, I think it might be me. And sometimes I'm right, and it's not the name, it's not my name they're calling. You can guess what the names might be. Kyle and Emily are among them. Well, thank you guys so much for giving you some of your time and for being yeah. our first guests on this podcast. I think it's going to yes. be a lot of fun. It's uh, we're breaking down each of these episodes and, and we're going to really enjoy doing it. So really getting us started. We got started right with you too. And thank you again for doing such a phenomenal job. It was really just excellent. And, and I'm so happy for you guys. And I'm so happy for the fans of this franchise that, that uh, everything went so great so far. Yeah, next time I'll come back with better lighting. <laughs> oh, your lighting's fine. All right. All right. So All right. thank you. Thank you. I'm guys. glad to be part of this family. It's been a pleasure. Do awesome. it. Yeah. Thank you guys. We'll hey. chat soon and hey. start to start doing some horror conventions because I know the fans are dying to meet you. Of course, mm -hmm. of course. Yeah, right. bro. Be over and fly to LA, man. We can do them together. <laughs> it's expensive, right. man. It's expensive. <laughs> LA, man. I don't All know right. if I can handle it. All right. Thanks, guys. Hey guys. See you later. <laughs> All right. That was super fun. Those guys are a lot of fun, obviously. Yeah, they're really cute together. I mean, let's be honest. Like, I, That's a big part of why I think everyone really kind of connected with their relationship in the show. I mean, they're just they, they just have chemistry together. They enjoy each other a lot. It's obvious. Um, yeah. they have special handshakes and shit. You know, they're, they got way into yeah. it. And I think that that's a part of I think the charm of, of Candy, of Kyle and Andy, is that you could tell the affection was real uh and oh, that it still is definitely it was back then you know oh, no that's what i'm saying it was back then i mean you were a yeah. seven-year-old kid what am i gonna do yeah <laughs> yeah but uh um so yeah so as far as uh, for the business uh alex and i both have patreon accounts uh mine is patreon.com slash christina least you are alex underscore vincent um you can follow jackson on patreon no he's not on patreon I know, really. <laughs> I can't even. It's so much work to do social media. I can't. The people that do pets as well. It's crazy. We both offer really cool stuff on Patreon. A lot, a lot of stuff that's may, maybe different than what other people offer. So at least go, please check us out on there. And, no, and no, Alex and I don't offer. We offer, as far as the Chucky Talks podcast go, we offer the, a similar um, benefits as far as yeah. the podcast itself. But then we both have completely different other benefits. You have, you bring music and poetry and stuff to yours. I bring other other career, other you know acting things and photography and cooking and things to mine. So it's not like two of the same thing. No, it's definitely not. And and also there's, you know, there's going to be extended versions of these interviews. I know certainly our second interview which will be in part 1 of episode 2 um we trimmed out a lot i mean like more than half so there will be like additional uh extended interviews there extended conversations between us early access to things uh from the podcast and yeah different kinds of swag and stuff like that yeah so subscribe to this if you have not already i maybe you have i assume you might have you're here thank you guys so much for joining us part two of this first episode will be our chance to really delve into episode one we're going to do this with each episode of the show uh we have more interviews coming for you but part two will be next week tuesday at 10 o'clock and earlier for people on patreon but uh yeah we'll, we'll really uh we've thought a lot about these episodes and and we have a lot to say about them so maybe some things that you missed maybe some things that you thought of um and yeah we're going to try to make it a lot of fun Hey, right. welcome thanks for joining the cult Thanks for joining the cult indeed. Okay, we will see you guys next week. All right. Take Bye. care. Have fun. Bye.